Shanice Lorraine Wilson was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and relocated to Los Angeles, California with her mother and aunt at the age of eight. If you think they moved for Shanice's sake, you'd be wrong. The main reason was their desire to pursue a career of their own in the music industry. However, as Shanice started soaking up the LA atmosphere, she decided that she did want to sing as well. She'd already exhibited superior vocal talent at just seven months from her crib, humming melodies. As a toddler, her mother and aunt then brought her on stages around Pittsburgh to accompany them. Shanice's mother and aunt decided their efforts would be best spent shifting their focus to her and formed a management company to cultivate and promote her talents. In addition to her family members, Shanice grew up being influenced by the likes of Shaka Khan, The Emotions, The Clark Sisters, Michael Jackson, and Whitney Houston. Things started happening very quickly for Shanice, and it wasn't long before she booked her first commercial for Kentucky Fried Chicken with legendary jazz vocalist Ella Fitzgerald. They cook it up hot and tender like my music. I think scat, better with that, like nobody else, right? A couple of years after that, she joined the regular cast of the children's television series Kids Incorporated for the first dozen episodes. Also around this time, she competed on Star Search at the age of 11, and later, at that same age, signed her first record deal with A&M Records. After a few years of preparation, the label released 14-year-old Shanice's debut album, titled Discovery, in 1987. The project produced four singles in total, with the first two, Baby Tell Me Can You Dance, and No Half Steppin' becoming top 10 R&B hits. Shanice went on to sign a deal with Motown Records after the person who signed her to A&M left the company and she decided to exit as well. In late 1991, her second album, Inner Child, dropped. It included her best-known hit single, I Love Your Smile. The track reached the top 10 in nearly two dozen countries, went to number two on the Billboard Hot 100, captured the top spot on the R&B chart, and was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance. Fun fact, Shanice didn't want the song to be the first single off the album. She fought so hard to go in another direction that she actually cried in Motown CEO Gerald Busby's office when he put his foot down and said that's the way it was going to be. Clearly, he knew what he was doing. Shanice took major advantage of movie soundtracks being very popular at the time and contributed several songs to various ones, namely Don't Wanna Love You for the 1992 romantic comedy film Boomerang and It's For You for the 1993 superhero comedy film The Meteor Man. She also scored a major hit with the top 20 R&B and top 5 pop song, Saving Forever For You, for Beverly Hills 90210. 21 Ways To Grow, Shanice's third album, was released in 1994. This time around, the powers that be told her that I Love Your Smile was too pop, and she needed to go more urban to appeal to her black fan base. That way of thinking didn't make any sense to Shanice, since she knew that I Love Your Smile went to number one on the R&B chart. She followed the label's order anyway and filled her album with a bunch of R&B tracks. The plan didn't work and the album didn't put up numbers anywhere near what her last one did. Shanice then had another deja vu moment when Gerald Busby left Motown and she jumped ship with him. Since she had the time now not being signed to a major label, Shanice was able to take on the groundbreaking role as the first black performer to star in the role of Eponine in Les Miserables on Broadway in 1997. Little do people know, Shanice was right at home on stage because she was groomed from the start when her family first moved to the LA area. As a child, she began taking acting, dancing, and singing lessons at a local school. The head of the acting division just happened to be none other than the mother of actress Kim Fields, best known at the time for her roles on TV series, Different Strokes, and The Facts of Life. Kim's mother put Shanice in her first stage play, where she actually got to work with Kim, as well as Malcolm Jamal Warner, who would later go on to star on a hit sitcom of his own, The Cosby Show. 
Shanice eventually did sign with another label after Babyface asked her to sing some background vocals on fellow R&B singer Usher's song, Bedtime. After that, he thought she would be a perfect addition to the LaFace family. When she was least expecting it, Shanice bumped into the man who would later become her husband in the elevator of her apartment building. Mark Alexander Knox, better known as Flex, did know of Shanice as she knew of him, but things never went beyond that. He asked her for her number that day, but Shanice just had too much going on, so it didn't happen. They both admit though that the idea of getting each other's contact information was strictly innocent. Neither of them was in a relationship, were thoroughly enjoying their single status, and not looking to get anything started. They would have another chance meeting in the elevator again a couple of weeks later, and this time they were able to exchange numbers. They then built a strong friendship that later turned into a romance. Shanice dropped her first, and sadly, last project on La Face in 1999 with her fourth self-titled album. The first single, When I Close My Eyes, became a top 20 hit and even created chart history when it made the biggest jump at the time on the Hot 100, moving 75 positions from where it entered at number 91 to number 16. In February 2000, Shanice and Flex married. They went on to have two children, a daughter and a son. As excited and happy as the couple were to become parents, for Shanice, her becoming a mother ended up halting her career when her record label decided to drop her at five months pregnant, believing she wouldn't be able to handle the rigors her music career demanded of her as a new mom. She admits that she took the news very badly, spent a lot of time crying, feeling sorry for herself, and slid into a deep depression. She was able to snap out of it after logging on to social media and seeing all the words of encouragement she was being showered with by her devoted fans. Shanice returned to recording after a five-year hiatus and released her fifth studio album, Every Woman Dreams, on her own label. She may have been thrilled to finally be out on the music scene again, but financially, things weren't going well with the couple behind closed doors. Things really went downhill when the TV series that Flex had starred in for the last several years, One on One, got canceled. Residual checks from reruns and Shanice's record sales kept them afloat for a while, but within a few years, it was clear they were in trouble. As their debts mounted, they refinanced their mortgage and tapped into their retirement savings to cover their expenses, including the mortgage on their LA home. Everything came to a head one day when Flex was on his way to an audition and had to turn right around to go back home after his wife called him in a panic to let him know that a sheriff was on their property, telling them they had five minutes to vacate their house. After filing for bankruptcy and settling at a hotel for a while, Shanice and Flex were blessed to experience a whole host of friends come together to support them and help them get back on their feet. Probably the most known being Martin Lawrence and his then wife, Shamika, who gave the couple enough money to cover first and last month's rent for their new home. Today, the couple manage their finances very differently, preferring to use cash and debit cards instead of credit cards and constantly working on ways to build their income. After years of being dead set against going down the reality TV path, Shanice was able to convince Flex that it was something they should explore. So in 2014, their show, Flex and Shanice, premiered on the OWN Network. In 2019, Shanice returned with her first new single in three years called He Won't. Currently, she continues to showcase her timeless vocals during live shows every chance she gets, as well as playing Michelle Obama in the unofficial, unsanctioned Obama musical. In May 2023, she will also take part in DJ Cassidy's Pass the Mic Live event in New Jersey.